Coming up in this edition of NYMR-TV, we explain why a heritage railway is using 20th century colour light signals. We meet the man who is artist in residence and records daily life on canvas, and the S&T staff and volunteers investigate a rodent problem which has knocked out Levisham Level Crossing. Now a chance to go behind the scenes at one of the NYMR signal boxes. About half a mile from Pickering Station lies Newbridge Box. Its role is to control the line out of the southern terminus and watch over the crossing where the road to the moors crosses the railway. It was designed in the mid-1970s by John Boyes, the S&T engineer for the railway at the time. And it was probably commissioned in the 1980s. Now there were several options that the railway could have had, but this was the one that was chosen. And the signal box is located at New Bridge on a skew level crossing where visibility of the road is quite difficult. So it's decided this would be the best location for the signal box with regards to level crossing. And um, that then meant the signal at Pickering Station was too far away to work mechanically, so it was done electrically with cut down levers. We actually have a mechanical lever frame here. But the vast majority of the levers actually just are electrical switches, if you like. They just work relays down the line and they'll control things accordingly. There's just a few mechanical items at the level crossing, which is the level crossing gates and one signal on the other side of the level crossing, which is mechanical. But apart from that, it is all cut down levers, which is unusual, but it's not unique. There are several signal boxes like this on network rail and such like, one being White House just outside Middlesbrough Station, where there's about 40 levers and all electric and no mechanical at all. Now, from having no cars about at all, we've got cars in all directions. Of course, if you've got the gates set up correctly and everything's balanced out correctly, they shouldn't be too hard to operate. If you've got to use brute force, there's something wrong somewhere. But they are quite easy. You can do them one-handed quite easily. Yeah, in time, we'll be quite glad to have colour light signals down here because it'll be um, a fairly unique thing throughout the country because colour lights are disappearing rapidly now off the main network branch lines are losing them in particular single lines they're going over to radio signalling and the modern main lines they won't have colour light signals either because it's all radio signalling the train driver communicates directly with the signalling centre and there's just simply no need for colour lights down the line side it's all in the cab so this will be quite an un unusual unique situation having colour lights in particular with steam trains of course This is Chris Ware. He's the NYMR artist in residence. His gallery is behind the old station house at Levisham. As well as teaching art skills to his regular pupils, he also produces paintings and prints which record contemporary life on Britain's favourite heritage line. The former BBC television editor is now working on the Bridge 30 project with a view to raising £20,000 for the Bridges and Wheels appeal. So this shows the old bridge and you've got the kind of autumn of its day. So here are all the autumnal colours coming down the bank and the rust, the glorious red rust in the bridge and how, as that bridge was right at the end of its life, there was the colour falling off it and streaking down the walls and there were bits falling off it. You've got down there the girders coming out of the, uh, coming out of the bridge. Um, I hope this captures a sense of the end of the summer of its glory days. And then we'll have other paintings where the, I stood in a snow hole over here for about three days waiting for this huge crane to lift out the old uh, girders from the bridge. Uh, and that'll make a painting. There's a painting at night time of the last train over the bridge. And then the final thing will be with me standing down here somewhere seeing the first of the new trains, new train services coming over the new bridge. So that's the painting and we'll be selling the paintings to raise funds. But we'll get most of the income from selling prints. So if people want to order a print for, I think it's £40, then we'll have a limited edition of 400 of each picture. And if we can sell all of those, we'll raise £20,000 for the fund. So it's well worth people supporting it. I'm an artist thanks to a man who used to work in the station shop at Pickering, who I went to with a print I'd made of Sir Nigel Gresley, and said, I've painted this, would you like to sell it? And he said, no. And I was horrified, but I realised I hadn't thought about this at all. And he said, well, give me six on sale or return because you're a member. And then the next morning he rang me back and said, now I'll have six more. And because he gave me that second chance, my professional opportunity opened up. 
So I then set about painting every station on the line, so there was a set of prints, and you can buy those in the station shops or here at the studio. Uh, so we built up a set of pictures of the railway so that people can gradually collect those. And then the interest grew further, so I started painting specific engines, then specific events, so when we had the three A4s here, I did painting to mark that, and that raised lots of money for the railway. Uh, we had Tornado come, and that raised thousands, both for the railway and for the bridge appeal. Uh, so I'm now very involved in adding value to the railway and to the visitors so that they can find something unique that comes from the railway's own artist here. Back outside at Leversham Level Crossing, Craig Donald is working with Paul, Ray and Malcolm, all S&T volunteers. They are trying to repair the barriers which have become victim to a rodent attack. Just stop there. I mean, that was the last one to break, but yes. Yeah. But not on that side, anyway. The barriers had failed, and we eventually found out it was rodent damage. There's a hydraulic pipeline goes under the road, then under the railway, which connects the both the barriers together. And a rodent of some sort, be it a mouse or a rat or whatever, had eaten through it, as they do, and we had a hydraulic oil loss. So we've now replaced the oil line. But we've had one or two problems over the last few years with items being worn and not working as well as they should do. So what we're doing now is just trying to eliminate where the problems are or aren't by swapping a few valves and, and whatever. But they, we know we've got some sort of blockage in the system and we're trying to just isolate it at the moment, find out exactly where it is. But it's quite a complicated system, so it's just a case of trial and error at the moment. But we haven't got an external oil leak, so you can't see it visually. It's an internal oil leak, so we know the oil's getting through one of the valves, so we might have changed seals on a valve or whatever. But at the moment, we're just trying to find the fault. How, how much of a problem with rodents? And... They can be quite a bad problem with electric cables and such like, and um, there's not a lot you can do about it. They get into concrete troughing runs, they get into relay cabinets, and in particular in winter time, they'll eat cables and whatever else they can find, and um, it can cause you know, various failures, unfortunately. But it's a very difficult problem to solve. You, you know, if you put rodent pellets down, you can kill them, but next week there's another bunch to take their place, so you don't really achieve anything. So it's something we have to live with. The gang that's with me today, we're basically maintenance and a bit of new installation work now and again. But we do our best to keep the very working fault free. Which most of the time we can do, but obviously things happen. We've got quite a lot of signaling equipment now and it gets older and older. This system here on the barrage is about 30 years old and it's starting to show its age and it's getting worn out. So eventually it must be replaced with a new system of some sort. But at the moment we've got to keep it going. But the big problem with everything is there's not enough money to maintain it. You know, we could do a million quid or whatever, and we haven't got that money, so we maintain things as best as we can. But on the whole, I think we do a good job. We keep it all going.